today's video is another one about money. Yes, I'm going to be speaking about the 10 ways you can actually make money by saving. Don't underestimate the power of saving. There are so many ways that you can actually make more money by utilizing the money that you already have. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some key tips that I've learned over the years. everyone and welcome back to my channel if you're new then a massive welcome to you my name is dr baptiste i work as a portfolio gp if you are new and you haven't subscribed then why not consider subscribing because here on my channel you will find loads of useful content to support you on your medical career journey and while you're at it subscribing why not hit that like button if you found value in this video so before I start, I just want to put it out there that I'm not an expert in finances and in money. However, I have done some research in preparation for this video and I have compiled that research with my own experiences over the years. Tip number one, start by evaluating your finances. I've always found it really useful to use something like Excel, use a spreadsheet in which you can closely evaluate your income and your expenditure. Have a look at what's actually coming in and what is actually going out. You may have one or two main sources of income which you can document and then make a very detailed list of actually every single thing that you spend month by month. So expenses could include things like your rent or mortgage if you own a property, other things like your phone bills, uh, car insurance, petrol, I would even include things like clothes. In this list, look at what is essential and what isn't. And I'm sure you can decide on things that you may even be able to cut out. Tip number two, use comparison sites. Now this is something that I've only recently started doing myself for things like car insurance. So every year I will look and see if there's a better deal. This year actually the provider I was with um, was actually fine. They offered me a really, really good deal so I didn't need to do anything. But for many years, uh, I have looked around to see if there was a better deal out there uh, for my car insurance. So have a look around and do your research and see if you can get a better deal out there. There usually is if you look hard enough. Tip number three, make money. Now it sounds really obvious to say it, but if you have multiple streams of income or even a couple of streams of income, you may be able to save some money from one of those sources of income. So for instance, if I'm examining medical students or if I'm writing an article, some of that money I may not even touch. I may just save that. So think about the ways in which you can save from some of your sources of income. If you want to know much more about how you can achieve multiple sources of income, then check out one of my previous videos where I talk about the different streams of income you can have as a GP. And I'm sure it would be beneficial to you even if you are a non-medic. Tip number four, automate your savings. Now, this is something that I don't really do myself, but I think it's a really, really good idea. So for instance, you can set up a standing order. So when you get paid, whether it's 50 pounds or 100 pounds, come straight out of your account into your savings account. Now, the reason why I think this is so good is because you don't have to think about saving that money. And so month after month, if it's 10 pounds, 50 pounds or whatever it is you want to save, that money comes straight out of your uh, account, goes into your savings account. And then by the end of the year, you may have hundreds or even thousands of pounds. So like I said, I don't actually use this method. I manually save every month uh, and it fluctuates for me, but I usually have a set amount that I will save each month. And sometimes I'll save even if this means going without a certain luxury. Tip number five, hire an accountant. You may want to hire an ordinary accountant or a medical accountant. 
If not, then think about how you can complete your tax return or a P87 form yourself. You may think it sounds counterproductive hiring someone else to do something that you could potentially do yourself. However, I personally have an accountant because there are some things that I need to question and I'm not sure about. Especially being a medic, there are so many complicated things that you have to navigate. And if you're confident doing that or if you want to invest the time to do that, that will be good because that will actually save you money in the long run, potentially, if you do it correctly. However, having an accountant is really good because they're an expert in that field and they can actually tell you ways in which you can save and do things correctly. Of course, it depends on exactly what you're doing or how you're operating. For instance, if you're a sole trader or freelancer, you could do it yourself or you may want to hire an accountant. I personally think having an accountant is a very good thing. Of course, it does depend on what you're doing. For me, having an accountant enables me to delegate uh, <laughs> some of the financial things that I have to do every year. And it enables me to focus more time on actually making money. But of course, if you want to invest some time initially in working out how to complete tax returns, understanding basic finances, then of course, this will save you maybe 200 to 400 pounds a year. Just a few more points about having an accountant and the benefits of having one. Like I said, the accountant may be aware of things that you're not aware of, even if you think you are financially savvy or financially literate. And also having an accountant means that if there are any queries or issues uh, with HMRC, they can actually speak to HMRC on your behalf. So of course, if you are considering hiring an accountant, then think about the pros and cons. And like with most things, shop around before you settle with one person. You may even consider hiring a medical accountant. So number six is understand your tax. I'm now going to speak a little bit about tax rebates or tax refunds. Like I said, I'm not an expert. This is something that I've done a bit of research on and something that I've learned more about doing my own taxes and speaking to my accountant. So what is a tax rebate or refund? This is essentially money that you can reclaim from HMRC if you've paid too much tax. So a really top tip here is as a medic, there are many things that you can claim back on. You can make claims on expenses such as professional subscriptions, the GMC, the BMA, uh, the MPS or MDU, depending on who you've signed up with, Royal College fees and examinations. However, if you are a GP trainee in your final year and sitting your final practical exam, you're not able to actually uh, claim this back. Courses are a bit more debatable, they're not always allowed. However, if you're in training, you do have a study budget, so I would make sure that you use all of that budget if you can throughout the year. Also, you may not be aware uh, about equipment, stethoscopes and scrubs are also included in that list. However, you're not able to claim back on PPE because your employer should be providing that for you. Another top tip is that you may also be able to claim the cost of cleaning, replacing or repairing your specialist clothes. For example, a uniform or safety boots. In most cases, you can claim tax relief on the full cost of substantial equipment, such as a computer, which you have to buy to do your work. But you can only claim tax relief for equipment expenses if one, you need it to be able to do your job. Number two, you use the equipment for work and there is no significant private use. So this includes using the equipment in line with your organization's policy. Now, as an employee, you cannot claim for things like bicycles, cars or motorcycles that you use for work only if you buy it as a business. So it's a business car. However, you may be able to claim for mileage and fuel costs. So for example, you can claim mileage and potentially subsistence to a temporary place of work. When I was in training, I did a substantial amount of home visits in my first year as a GP trainee, and I submitted a form to the practice manager who knew all about it, and I was able to recoup some money back. If the practice manager doesn't know, which they should, but if they don't, then I would speak to your GP supervisor, your peers, and even the program directors. Okay, so how do you claim this money back? 
there are a few ways you can claim and it does depend on the amount of money that you're claiming for but essentially you can complete a form online and post it you can go online and create an account a government gateway account and if you've claimed a tax rebate before you can call up uh, by phone the form you need to complete is called a p87 form the other thing you can do is complete or get your accountant to complete a self-assessment tax return and this is if you're self-employed or for another reason now this is something that not many people know about you can go back four years to claim tax rebates okay so with the remaining tips i'm going to be providing you with it's really important that you do your research there are a lot of things out there and there's always fine print that you need to read so make sure that if you do look into these tips that you do your research number seven is referral fees now if you're locuming and you're signed up to a locum agency as a medic they often ask you to refer a friend and they will pay you uh, to refer someone to that agency it may be around 250 pounds maybe more it depends on the agency that you're with the person that signs up to the agency must complete a certain number of hours uh, as one example of fine print so just be aware if you do refer someone that you're not going to essentially get that money straight away uh, they may have to work uh, maybe a hundred hours uh, until you're able to get that uh, referral fee Number eight is bank accounts. So that could be an ISA. There are different types of ISAs. There are cash ISAs, there are investment ISAs. And essentially ISAs have high interest rates and your money is tax free. However, due to the pandemic, the interest rates aren't as high. So you may have to shop around to see if you can get a really, really good deal. For any of you who have children, there are ISAs for children with really high interest rates. It could be around 2%. So that might be worth looking into if you're interested. Number nine is cashback on debit cards. I believe also credit cards as well. So what that means is that if you spend at a certain a store a certain company uh, you will get a percentage of that money back to your debit card that could be 10% it could be a little bit more you may also want to look into some loyalty schemes with certain companies and also some discount codes so if you're shopping for example make sure you have a look at the website they often advertise discount codes from time to time so make sure you get the bargains Number 10 is switching bank accounts. Now, again, there's always going to be fine print. There's always going to be terms and conditions. So make sure you do your research thoroughly. But if you do switch to another bank, they may offer you again a sum of money for doing so. But like I said, there are usually terms and conditions. So make sure that you read, make sure you do your research. So those are the 10 ways that you can make money by saving. Like I said at the start of the video, do not underestimate the power of saving. You will be surprised once you take it seriously how much you can actually save. So I hope you found the video useful. If you did, then make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Like I've said before in my previous videos, I will be doing much more around finances. So stay tuned for that and have a look around my channel. I've got loads of useful content to support you on your medical career journey. I will see you in my next video.